And again, it's the 8th, oh no, the 10th of October in the morning, and we're doing the first turn uh, for this campaign, the 10th of October turn, and uh, the French go first. And so I'm already curious about how this is working out and whether we're approaching it correctly. Uh, if you look at it from a VP acquisition standpoint, the uh, vedettes here and here, uh, you know, we're moving here to try and uh, block any potential moves this way. Not that uh, this vedette is going to, you know, slow much down, but it is in a town and it would uh, have an opportunity to at least to slow the movement of any approaching Prussian forces. But these two guys over here uh, are in command. Uh, because of their role, and they're going to roll up and pick up those two VP hexes, their supply hexes, right? Uh, that's what I guess I would do. Now, what should I do at first turn? Well, maybe not. Maybe I should bring all of Soleil's forces. Uh, Soleil's up here. Let me just adjust the camera a little bit. There he is. I've got this wound pretty tight, so I, it's going to jerk a little bit. Um, but, you know, these forces here are... Uh, you know, making their own progress in road march mode up this way. But we've sent the cavalry on ahead, not necessarily scout, but to actually acquire uh, uh, VPs. So, why well, you know, system doesn't disallow it. Is it in the spirit of the game? I don't know. Not really a whole lot of uh, after-action reports and play and commentary on BGG for this game. And I've tried going through the folders at uh, Consum World, but there's so many messages on this game. Well, there's quite a few, but there's not so many. But uh, there's enough messages to make it a, a drag to try and go through the outline and find uh, commentary on play that uh, is re related to what I'm looking for. Anyway, uh, <laughs> interesting point about hidden movement. So many units end up out of command or in road march mode that you pretty much covered up most of the guys anyway. And I'll just leave the odd uh, commander or officer uh, exposed. And, you know, I know what's going on then as the player. And the rest of the guys are pretty much covered up by uh, by these command markers and uh, or information shits that tell us what the current situation is. So I, I don't really need to flip them over. It would be an enormous pain, I think, um, in terms of play to try and keep track of your formations if every single unit was flipped over and you didn't know where they were. Uh, I'm not sure that I would be excited about doing that every turn, flipping guys over to work out who they were and where they were and where they were going. Um, I think I made some comments earlier on about the the sequence of movement uh, for road march units and non-road march units and those that are in command and out of command, and it does have an impact, and so it is important that uh, you, get, you get the right guys into command. And so I'm actually uh, moved Napoleon up and made sure that he's in range to activate these guys next turn. And I pulled back, uh, I think that's Bernadotte, I can't read him from this angle in the dark. Uh, I pulled him back to get him activated uh, this next turn. Uh, quite easily as well. So now we're going to move on to the combat phase, of which I don't think we'll have one here. Um, well, actually, I guess we will, because we've got to flip this guy over and see what the deal is, but I'm imagining he will try and retreat, because this is a 6 and a 7, and he has a 9 movement rate, so he'll be able to retreat, and he's a vedette in any case anyway, so we'll see what happens from there, and we'll catch up with you a little bit later on.